Coming up on today's Locked On Senators. After a 5-4 win over Seattle, the Sens find themselves in first place among teams that aren't currently in the playoffs. And the road trip continues with two back-to-back games this weekend up against Vancouver Canucks and Calgary Flames. Full weekend preview including Belleville and how close could Tyler Clevin be to turning pro NCAA tournament action this weekend? We'll set that up and more. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. And welcome to episode 753 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, today is Friday, March 10th. And you're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Leave a comment below. How did that 5-4 win make you feel last night? Did you look at the standings right away? The Senators pushing up to the first team not in a playoff spot. But Pilsy, I'm still buzzing off that hustle play from Claude Giroux that created the game-winning goal. Yeah, this is why it was so important to get Claude Giroux on this team. They needed a veteran leader that can make these types of plays, come up clutch, keep the boys accountable. And Claude Giroux scores the tying goal to deflate any momentum the Kraken have after taking their first lead of the game and then sets up the game winner. And all the while being an absolute stud in the faceoff dots. So Claude Giroux was my first Send Central, Send Central standout last night and for a good reason. Oh, it's so much fun seeing this guy play. And and the the way he talked to the bench, our boy Martian clipped it. Like, that's all time. Like, are, are we going to do this, boys? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Just the emotional leading that he did yesterday was was unreal. And, oh, 12 points away from 1,000. But really, it's the little things, the big things, everything that he accomplishes on the ice. And all the new additions had an impact in last night's game. We were talking, except for Shane Pinto, who opened the scoring, you had Chikrin. Patrick Brown, then you had Giroux, then you had Alex Dabrinkit scoring the game winner. It was all guys who weren't on this team a year ago. So the turnover is is now talent. It used to be quantity of turnover, and now we're getting quality pieces being brought in. Patrick Brown gets the goggles, Ooh. though. What an awesome story there for the new newcomer in his first game. Yeah, Patty Brown seems just like a great dude, and I think he's going to fit into this locker room well. And uh that was one hell of a shot. Like, you, you got to give sick taps to Matthew Joseph, a nice play to set him up. But Patty Brown finishes it, and he kind of touts himself as a simple north-south guy. But, hey, you can put the puck in the net, too. So you love to see that one goal, uh, one game, one goal. It's pretty good. If I had told you that Mad Sogard would be 5-1-1 one, and one in seven starts this year, would you have believed me? I don't think so. Uh, Ross, I don't think I would have believed that he would have seven starts even. Like the plan was not for Mad Sogard to be playing in the NHL and to be the number one starter for a considerable stretch here. It was supposed to be Anton Forsberg and Cam Talbot, both of them injured right now. So the young kids are going to have to continue doing what they've done in a small sample size. So it'll be interesting, Ross, as we have back to back late games this weekend. Who's going to start which game? I'll be very interested to see how Zach Burke and DJ Smith chalk this one up. The save percentage, not great in the last two games, but as we talked about on the postcast last night, man, big saves when they mattered most last night for Mad Sogard, keeping this team in a winning position. How would you start the goalies this weekend? I already know you're going to give one goalie a game each, and I would do the same with, uh, with Vancouver and Calgary on the docket, but which one would you give Mad Sogard? I'm I think I'm going Mando, Vancouver, Sogard, Calgary. Okay. Any reason for that? I think Calgary is a bit of a tougher draw. Um and then I think it's good to give Sogard a bit of a break here after a tough Chicago game and then a game up against Seattle where a bunch of bounces don't go his way. Give him a bit of a breather here and and then let him kind of restart up against Calgary. That at least that's my opinion, but 
I don't feel too strongly one way or another, Ross. I think either way you slice it, it can be okay. Well, Matt Sogard has experience beating the Calgary Flames. His first win this season was that comeback win over True. Calgary where Tim yeah. Stutz scored the OT winner. So I like that thought process. You're also looking at a Canucks team that's probably – and there's no easy games. The Senators learned that the hard way last Monday. But when you're looking at the uh, the Vancouver Canucks – They've been hot lately, Ross. I mean, they took overtime to beat the Anaheim Ducks. And the Ducks have been taking a lot of ricochet shots on this show all season long. But – Come on. Come on now. Uh, We're on a three-game win streak. Okay, yeah. Nashville in a shootout as well. The selling Nashville press. Okay. I don't mean to be too hard on the Vancouver Canucks. I think their fans kind of wish they were losing a bit more yeah. than they have recently. They're six, two and one actually in their last nine games and go check out locked on Canucks new show on the network. New guys took over. Uh, so you can go check out locked on Canucks there. Uh, but Saturday, I mean, you're looking at, I think the fans of both teams want the sense to win that game. And I always bring it up before the Vancouver games, Pilsy. This might be the most electric road senators crowd that they get on whenever they're away. And, I, I think it's because they only play there once a year, right? So anyone in British Columbia, maybe not just Vancouver, who's a fan of the Sens, they'll make the travel because that's the closest hub for them to go see the team. Yeah, or unless they're going to Seattle. Um, but there's so many people from Ontario in BC. So if you're not uh, if you're not a blue-blooded Leafs fan, which uh, we hope you're not, and you're from Ontario in BC, you're going to catch the Sens every time they're there. So yes, Ross, I'm, I'm saying it now. We're going to do that trip. We we are going to make that happen because I want to check out the Seattle arena and I'm a, I'm a BC guy myself. So I usually go there once a year. So I can find a way to get out there to watch some Sens hockey. 100%, especially with the entertainment value that this team has brought to the West Coast. Can we talk about last year, Adam Gaudet sitting on the bench for the final two periods and then going out and scoring the shootout winner in yeah. in a revenge game situation? Like, that was all time, and it gave us this background shot as we're pulling up on YouTube <laughs> right now. I've got this one in the chamber. This, yeah. this dude right here better be at the game on Saturday night. <laughs> I think he will be, but I want to meet the guy with the Sens flame hat also. <laughs> Just an all-time game, all-time memory. I want people in the comments to let us know, where is the best road atmosphere for an Ottawa Senators fan? Where have you watched the game and felt like you're among friends when you feel like, you know, you got Sens army on your side? I really am curious to know what other answers will get. I've been to some games in Tampa. I think that's a pretty good crowd. A lot of snowbirds that go down from Ontario. So Florida's a, a good hub. But man, Vancouver on the list. Pilsy, I love that. We're going to try to make that happen next year. What's going to happen this weekend? Coming up next, we'll tell you some keys to victory. An amalgamated version of game day previews because the Senators play Saturday and Sunday and Belleville is in action tonight and tomorrow they all of a sudden aren't in last place and they're making a push up and a few lineup changes some trades i thought the deadline was over but future considerations are being handed out like cookies on halloween treats on halloween tricks on halloween we'll get into all that and then wrap up the show talking some college hockey north dakota ohio state Stephen halliday tyler clevin and what's going on with our boy Pistol Pete? Oscar Pedersen is moving around in Sweden once again. That's all coming up. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one sportsbook in North America and an official partner of the NFL. Guys, if you haven't checked out FanDuel already, you got to do it. I've been pumping up their app. I love it. It's simple. It's safe. It's secure. It's easy to use. They have so many fun options, whether you like money line, puck line, point spread, player props, first to five shots. That's been cashing in almost consistently every single game. So you got to get on that. Almost consistently is a great line. <laughs> Yeah, almost consistently. I, I want to give myself a window of uh, of uh, getting out of this one if it backfires on me here. But I've been having fun riding along with that, and you can too at FanDuel. And for our friends over in the United States, if you're a first customer, go to FanDuel, and for your first $5 bet, you can get $150 in free bets guaranteed. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. You got to check them out, guys. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 
Today's episode is also brought to our, you by our friends at the Glebe Central Pub. Go check them out at 779 Bank Street, right in the heart of the Glebe. So if you're going down to Lansdowne, you're going to go check out the 67s, who are a complete wagon this year. On the way there, why not grab a bite at the Glebe Central Pub? They also love the Senators as much as anybody. They have the volume on for Sens games. We were being asked that in the postcast last night. Of course they do. It's a Sens bar. Let's go. The Glebe Central Pub in the heart of the Glebe also wants to take you to the Sens game, take you home from the Sens game. It's all thanks to Glebe Central Pub for $15. You can head to their website and see all the games that they have on the schedule coming up. $15 round trip. What's an Uber? $80 round trip? No. Just put the keys away, have a great safe night at the game, and they'll drop you right back off at the Glebe Central Pub for more fun, an inclusive atmosphere, tasty food, great post-game food. Are you kidding me? Get the wings, honey garlic or honey hot you be the judge of that one but you can always get it at the glebe central pub check them out at 779 bank street and make sure you let them know that locked on senators sent you all right pilsy two big games coming up for the ottawa senators and a big giveaway coming up Ooh. at Send Central on Twitter. But we'll talk about that at the start of the next segment because these Ottawa Senators, man, six wins in their last seven games. And you know what my biggest qualm was with this team, Pilsy? Was when they would lose a game, they'd lose two, three, or four. Yep. Now they get right back to their winning ways. And we questioned some of the lineup decisions that were made going into yesterday. But DJ Smith had his crystal ball because Nick Holden played a real solid game, two assists for him, and Patrick Brown comes in and scores a goal, gets the goggles. I mean, it probably couldn't have gone better for DJ Smith and what he did going into last night's game, unpopular or not. Yeah, and I think that's the one thing everyone needs to just calm down a little with the chicken and stuff is – Jacob Chikrin is so damn good. It doesn't matter where you play him. He's so good. He's so good offensively, defensively, the eye test, the Corsi uh, numbers. Like his Corsi numbers in his first game with Nick Holden were not great. And now they're great. Like it was crazy how he's able to flip that. His numbers with Branny are good. His numbers with Shabbat are good. His numbers with Sanderson are good. So as long as Jacob Chikrin is not being healthy scratched by DJ Smith, I don't care where you put him. As long as it's on the ice. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I want him on the ice. Yeah, that's it. As, as much as possible. And, and you can understand now why Arizona fans were upset that the return wasn't more. But you can also understand why Bill Armstrong didn't want to give him away before, like last summer or leading in. He probably just got jammed up once everyone else who was in the mix for him decided to look in other directions exactly. to fix their decor. The fact that he signed for two more years is absolutely brilliant when you look at what he brings to the table. This guy turns 25 this year. Like he, he's, he's younger than Thomas Shabbat. This guy fits in perfectly. He could not be a more perfect fit for the Ottawa Senators. And he's showing it. Four points in four games. Guy's a defenseman. It's insane. And that's where, like, we really got to give credit to Pierre Dorian for being patient. Because if Pierre Dorian was like, okay, the chicken price is too much. I'm not giving up Greg or Pinto. I'm out. I'm going to acquire Orlov, uh, Gavikov. I'm going to acquire one of these other guys. Then you've lost out on that. But he knew you wanted someone with term. He wanted someone that would want to play in Ottawa. And we've seen, I mean, apple fritters, celebration, tears at the mention of uh, Ottawa Valley. Like, this guy wants to be here. And he signed out a good contract. And you can play him anywhere. Like, it, it cannot be understated how good of a fit this is. And that Pierre Dorian waited and stood firm at what he was willing to give up. And it worked out perfectly. Would you say he rested on all the offers? I would not say that because oh, he might okay. go crazy. Rest is a weapon. I've, if I hear that one more time, I'll go crazy. <laughs> if he heard Jacob Chikrin is not available for that price, you would think he'd go crazy. But then all of a sudden, patience is a virtue. And Pierre Dorian is able to make the heist of the trade deadline, adding 
Jacob Chikrin. Like, I, I'm excited for tomorrow's Sens game so I can watch Jacob Chikrin play hockey more because yeah. what an animal in the offensive zone. He's a bit of a rover out there, eh? Like, you, you don't know whether he's going to be in the low slot where he scored his goal last night. You don't know whether he's going to be on the half wall where he scored his first goal. He can contribute at the top of the uh, the top of the umbrella as well. He is just such a great skater. He's able to do do so many different things. And I highlighted uh, last night on the postcast, that defensive two-on-one breakup he made in the first period, that goes in, you're looking at a team that's on, on their heels right away after getting beat up on Monday. So for him to just bring that presence to the Ottawa Senators' blue line is is tremendous. Now, getting into a quick game day preview for tomorrow, like does Brandy get back in the lineup for you? To me, you could be looking at, at Travis Hammond coming out. I mean, he ate some pucks at the end of the game, but... I don't think he will. I think DJ Smith has, has a, a bit of a Tom Pyatt, Guy Boucher affinity yeah, yeah. for uh, for Travis Hamannick. And, and don't get me wrong, he's he's one of the guys at the start of the season that I said I was going to pump their tires as much as I could. But at some point, you kind of got to look at him and say, hey, Nick Holden kind of does what you do, but he's doing it a lot better right now. Yeah, I'm kind of falling off the hammer train. Sorry, Ross. I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, this next stop while you continue to ride the hammer train. I'm gonna get off here. I've pulled, I've pulled the cord on the bus. You're already off. I've pulled the cord. Next stop, let, let me off the bus. But at the same time, okay. I can see him. Like, look at all these playoff teams. They have eight, nine, ten NHL quality defensemen. Yes. I'm not saying that Hamnick should be in the AHL or or sent uh, sent to Mars, sent for future considerations, <laughs> which we'll get to with Belleville. But I do think that a night off could do him some good. Let, yep. Let's not discount though that this guy's found an offensive touch. He's got like seven points in his last 15 games. Had that two-goal performance last week against Columbus. But you, you also look at what what the conversation has been, has been Holden or Brandstrom. But that's that's tired. That's DJ Smith and his lineup, what's realistic. I think the conversation should move, be moving more towards, is it Holden or Hamannick in the lineup in the bottom pair? But otherwise, man, like this decor looks pretty set. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think I'm not damning Travis Hamannick. I just think it's it's time he gets a healthy scratch. And I really think there's no reason why Branny should be the guy on the outside looking in. I think Nick Holden does a great job as a third pair defenseman. And I think Hamannick can do a great job as a third pair defenseman. I just think maybe it's time that he shouldn't be playing with uh, Jake Sanderson. Even if Sanderson is comfortable and says he likes playing with them. I wouldn't mind seeing more of Chickern and Sanderson, to be honest, because I think that would slot your top four very nicely like that. So, yeah, I I, I want to see Brandy back in here. It's it's not fair to him that he's the, the guy on the outside, but having Holden and Hamnick as your seventh defenseman options that you can flip-flop in and out, I think is, is great here. And when you look at uh, Seattle, and I think it was Graham in the, uh, in the postcast last night that mentioned – that that Seattle four check, they're relentless. And in years past, less this year, but in years past, Brandy's gotten run over by strong four checks. That's kind of the one area of the game where size isn't on his side. And I think that that could maybe have been a reason why he, why he came out. And Vancouver doesn't have the same four check. I don't know if many teams yeah. do in the league. So I'd like to see Branstrom back in the lineup tomorrow. But we know DJ Smith. Why change a winning lineup? DJ, do you ever? Consider changing a winning lineup. Yes. Ha ha ha. Yes. That was a lie, DJ. Don't lie to me on this show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to go with the Alfie. Probably not. No, no. Should I though? Hey, Alfie, is DJ going to change the lineup? Uh, probably not. <laughs> no, probably. <laughs> there it is. I love it. But hey, it, it's not what this the 5-6 defensemen are going to do. It's not what the bottom line is going to do. It's what are the big dogs going to do. And when they come to play, this team is is damn near unbeatable. Just look at the record when Alex Debrinkit scores 16-1-1. One one. Unreal. So hopefully this the cat can, uh, can get up to his old tricks, find a few more in his hat. Oh, speaking of the big dogs, though, Ross, I hate to bring a negative aspect to this, but your biggest dog, your captain... Brady Kachuk had zero shots on goal. That's only the second time all season he's had zero shots on goal. So for for all my Brady Kachuk three and a half shots over bet riders, that was a tough one. And uh, I was very shocked to see that because I don't know about you, Ross, but I didn't even really notice Brady making an impact at all, which, hey, this guy brings it every night. He's going to have an off night once in a while here or there. But I thought that was a weird 
kind of omission in a game like this where it's back and forth and nine goals are being scored for Brady Kachuk not to be involved at all. Especially when he played 21-23, which is like yeah, second wow. most on, on the Senators. But you're right. Uh, just kind of a, a neither here nor there game for the captain. How about, man, Timmy played 24 minutes last night in a regulation game. This guy is, is an animal. But hey, I got a stat for everyone and shout out FanDuel. I would be hammering Brady Kachuk anytime point, which probably is like minus money, but Brady Kachuk has gone four different occasions, pointless in two straight games. Not once this year has he gone three straight games without a point. Okay, nice. I like that. Is that a levy lock? That's a levy lock. You know Ooh. what? Let's get crazy. Two plus points for the captain, Brady Kachuk, tomorrow. Damn. I mean, in that vein, too, you got to be hammering the over shots. Like he's going to be getting in the mix. Yeah. Hammering it. Career against Vancouver, Brady Kachuk, 11 points in 16 games. Not bad. Okay, not, not bad. bad. Obviously, the All-Canadian division, where a lot of that came from. Yeah, definitely. Um, what What's one theme that you're hoping to see this weekend for the Senators oh. in both games? I've got one for you, Ross. For a team that has been propped up by their power play all season long, the drought is here. This team cannot score a power play goal. They're not even getting power play chances. Ross, not only that, they're getting scored on when they are on the power play here. So if this team's going to have a chance in this wild card race, which I believe they do, they are leading the wild card race right now. Pole position yeah. on the race. What pole do you mean, position, eh? Pole position amongst the teams that aren't in. Yeah, in the race. Well, the race, to win the race, you're in the race, and the winners of the race are in the two spots. Don't let facts get in the way of a good story, Ross. Jeez, come on. Um, I'm they, set the first place right in the intro. Ross, <laughs> <laughs> they're almost consistently leading the race of the wild card uh, spot here. But if they're going to have a chance in sticking around in this, their power play is going to have to... It doesn't have to get back up to the glory that it was earlier in the season, but it's got to do something. Like, at the very least, Ross, it has to create momentum. That is a low bar right now. And when you have no success up against Chicago in a goal and a game where nine goals are scored, none of them are on the power play for the Sens, they need to get it going here. Whether that means tweaking the units and seeing mix and matching, starting that second unit more often than not. Now, I'm not sure the best opportunity here, but my my theme for the weekend is going to be watching that power play. I like that theme and the auto senators power play. A part of why it's been so lethal is Brady Kachuk and Tim Stutza. Our boy, Justin on Twitter, shout out Justin at Justin Cruz 92 tweets us this under 25 years old players who are in the top 30 of league scoring. There's five of them Pilsy, and two of them are members of your Ottawa senators. That is a sick stat. Yeah, you'll love to see that. Those are some pretty good names to be attached to as well. Uh, for people on uh, just listening, Jason Robertson, Elias Pettersson, and Jack Hughes, and then Tim Stutzla and Brady Kachuk. So that's nice. Very nice. That's very nice. Crispy. Shout out Jonathan for, for that one. A crispy stat there. How do you fix the power play? I'm going to leave you with that thought. We'll answer that question and touch on some Sens prospects. Belleville Senators action coming up next. You're listening to Locked on Senators. All right, Pilsy. Senators about to play back-to-back -back games for what, the hundredth time this year? God. Been a lot of them, yeah. Well, after this road trip, they come back home. Do you want to meet the Sens when they're back home for their next game? Ooh. March 16th against the defending Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche, and we are giving away two tickets thanks to our friends at Shawarma Palace. Our friends at Shawarma Palace, you know I love Shawarma Palace. So does Pilsy, and for good love reason. It. And they're just the best people, too. They love the Ottawa Senators, and they want you to get 100-level seats to go see the Senators and Colorado Avalanche. Like, does it get any better than that matchup? I mean, that's an important game. Senators lost 7 nothing in Colorado. You have to come to play at home. That's got to be fresh, even though it's from November. you got to be fresh in your mind when this game happens. So head over to Twitter, 
at Send Central. If you don't have Twitter, I think it would be worth creating an account just to get in on this. We're going to announce the winner on Monday's Locked On Senators podcast. So all you have to do is be following Shawarma Palace, be following Pillsy and I, and Send Central, and reply with a screenshot to show you're subscribed on YouTube. Make sure you're following Shawarma Palace. We want to pump their followers. We want this to be a, sy- a symbiotic relationship. We love Shawarma Palace. They've signed on for the whole year. Like they're they are the best. We absolutely love them. So go show them some love as well, and go retweet. Get in the contest Monday. The winner will be announced. Pillsy, the seats are sick. We put a we put a photo, the view from your seats, the same row and everything. You're going to be able to see Jacob Chickering up close and personal. So I know that's going to get a few extra retweets. People wanting to go see Chickering, and it's Marvel night. So nice to see Thor on the ice for the Senators. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely, I mean, and for people that are like, oh, it's so annoying posting the screenshot. Consider that the price you're paying for getting an opportunity to win seats in the 100 level up against the defending Stanley Cup champions. So and for those who, you know, you've been subscribed forever and we appreciate you just as just the same, but it pumps the numbers each time we do it by like 50 to a hundred. So just take one for the team. We appreciate yeah. you. And uh, that way I put it into like the Twitter contest picker. And I can say like people have to have replied this and have to be following the account. So it just makes life a little bit easier and get your subscribe, get your entries in for the contest Monday. Pilsy, what the hell do we do about the Sens power play? Oh, for 14 run right now. And yeah. No changes to the personnel. Would you start looking at that as an option if you're DJ Smith? I mean, you have to, right? Like, uh, I, I think Martian mentioned it in last night's postcast. I think maybe you consider moving Batherson to the second unit. And uh, I'm not sure who you would switch Batherson for, but I haven't really loved Batherson's play as of late. So I think it would be nice because my first instinct was to put Giroux on that top unit, but... Giroux is the driving force of that second unit, and I love the chemistry him and Pinto have together, so I'm hesitant to do that. But do you have any ideas? Well, the second pair, second unit hasn't scored at all either. So, I mean, I'm kind of beyond They've that. They've been looking but... better, though. I don't know if you would agree with that, but that's what yeah, I've seen. I would, but ultimately, if you're going to make a change to the first unit, you have to change the second unit. You're not going to put Patrick yes. Brown up on the top unit, right? No. Oh, hey, don't tempt me. <laughs> I mean, Martian probably just got all giddy. He got a little extra uh, hop in his step when he heard you say that one. But I think what I would do, and it's easier said than done. I get the dynamic in the locker room, and he's been the guy. He is the guy. He wears a letter. But Thomas Shabbat needs to be on the second unit. I hate to say okay. it. Yep. But I, I think that even when you take away the fact that I think Shabbat kind of slows the pace down a little bit too much when the top unit, you should just be trying to, especially when you have shooters like the Brinkett and, and like Timmy to move around and Brady's net front, you need to funnel as many pucks into Brady's feet at the yep. net front and let him jam away at rebounds. Jacob Chikrin is your best shooting defenseman. Get like that it. guy on the trigger point. I want pucks coming from the top of the, of the uh, like the middle of the ice. I know that you have your shooters usually on the one timer position. I want Chikrin shot at the top of the circle. He has no problem because I think the argument when when you're looking at Shabbat is like, oh, he's so smooth at skating. He's a he's like a free zone entry type thing. Dude, Chikrin can skate just as well. So I think that that would be my first move. Have Chikrin at the top of the uh, of the umbrella. Timmy on one side, Debrinket on the other, Brady down low. And I think for now, I'd probably leave Bathers in there. I think that one change of putting Chikrin up there could make a world of difference. But if you were going to make a secondary change, I'd probably put Pinto there. If I'm going to move Bathers in yeah. away, we've seen him have that bumper success with, uh, with Giroux typically, but not that Timmy can't put it on a T for him either right there. But Pinto would probably be my second option in that high slot area that we see Batherson go. And that's the guy who's going to have to help retrieve pucks in the corner with Brady. And we know Pinto's got a long stick and he's able to get in there well uh, as well. So um, I, I just hope something changes because like you said, they're being outscored on their own power plays to nothing in the last week and a half. That's, that, that's not a recipe for su- sustainable success. No, it really isn't. I think the and with that switch that you're suggesting, you would be changing the mindset from what Thomas Shabbat does really well on the power play Ross. I don't even think he's that good at zone entries. I think, like you said, he slows things down more than he speeds things up. But where he does do a really good job 
is sliding it over to Timmy and to Debrinket so they can have easy one-time opportunities. I think he does a really good job of kind of faking that wrist shot and then smoothly teeing them up. So instead of that being the main driving force, trying to get those flanks doing one-timers, I like the idea of having Chikrin get low shots through traffic and having Brady create chaos. And then if Brady gets it from a rebound, he can either try to jam away at it and uh, get a shot, or then he pivots his body and then kicks it back out to those guys on the flank. And that's how you uh, get those one-timers. So I think it would change the mindset of the power play, but I mean, you got to try something here. I completely agree. You got to try something, anything, please, because how much fun was it when the Sens would go to the power play? You're like, okay, flip a coin. Are they going to score or not? Yeah, Ross, at previous games, like in the season, when the Sens would go to the power play, I was running to FanDuel to get my updated bets in. Like if they were down by one and the Sens are on the power play, um, I'm booking it on live betting the money line because it was a very good chance they're going to tie things up and then get some momentum. So, yes. I wish we could go back to those days. But, I mean, Ross, the funny thing is, in those days, we were like, can this team score five on five? And now they're scoring five on five. And we're like, can this team score on the power play? Like, we're never happy. No, we aren't. But I am happy to tell you that since January 1st, the Vancouver Canucks have the worst penalty kill in the National Hockey League. They are clicking at a 68% clip. Woo! That means they're yeah. giving up goals 32% of the time. Not a math guy with a little decimal in there too. Don't 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 <laughs> hate on me with a little decimal. Not a math guy. But, uh, hey, that's a recipe to me for success. And then Calgary is 17th, just middle of the pack penalty kill. This, of course, since the calendar flipped to 2023. Senators' PK is fourth. But you look at their power play. Sure, for the season, they're, what, still sixth, I want to say, in the power play? Sixth on the power yeah. play, which sounds good. But then when you look at it, they were second before. So mm -hmm. hopefully they can figure it out before the game against Edmonton because we know what power play uh, problems they present and matchups. I, I don't know if you saw McDavid went down hard last night. Took a bit of a knee on knee. Obviously, oh, really? we never want Connor McDavid to be out. This guy's way too good for the game, and we just simply never cheer for injuries. But if he needs to rest it, I mean, they're in a playoff spot. If he, if he needs to rest it, feel free to wait until after Tuesday. Yep, agreed. Tuesdays are great days for rest, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, best day of rest of your life, or what? <laughs> yep, absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, let's touch on a little, or you got anything more on the Sens on the weekend? Obviously, we'll have the postcast tomorrow after the game. Dude, can we can we give some stick taps, some love to all the Sens Central citizens out there who are up live 270 yeah. people in the postcast at 1 30 in the morning eastern time on a work night on a thursday night all time stick taps to all you sickos out there that was awesome yeah when the postcast is vibing ross it it warms my soul like that just it, it makes me feel like finally sense fans have a reason to be this crazy and not it's not like okay let's stay up late so we can all uh, commiserate in our misery together. Like, no, we're going to celebrate together. So, yeah, we love you guys for doing that. Do we love them as much as Pierre Dorian loves Tyler Clevin? <laughs> I don't know if I've, I've got enough room in my house to adopt 250 uh, Send Central citizens, but we, we can make things work. Yeah, we'll figure something out here. Yeah, well, Tyler Clevin and the North Dakota Fighting Hawks are playing tonight the start of a best of three against Johnny Tyconic. And Omaha. 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 Get Peyton Manning. I wonder what it would cost him on Cameo to say Omaha. Probably way too much. Maybe We'll just get the clips from replays. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's that's going to be a big series. Now, North Dakota is ranked sixth. And Omaha is ranked third. This is just in the NCHC. If they lose this series, this best of three, they might not even get invited to the NCAA tournament, which is the top 16 in the country. That would mean that Tyler Clevin could sign as early as next week, Pilsy, if things do not go well this weekend. Of course, Pierre Dorian loves winners. Tyler Clevin scored the Penny Rosa, the NCHC clinching championship goal last year for North Dakota. But this year, things have not been going well for that program. And you look at Tyler Clevin being suspended multiple times, just being not even allowed to hit, really. I think it might be a blessing in disguise if they get eliminated here soon. And I hate to well, say it, I'm a North Dakota guy. I mean, yeah, you're wearing your North Dakota sweater. Um, I think, 
Ross, maybe this is some foreshadowing though, but a trade was made in Belleville moving a veteran defenseman for future considerations. Do we think maybe that's some foreshadowing to open up a spot for a certain young adopted son? Interesting. Very interesting. But we've also heard, although maybe being in the playoff hunt could probably change things. I would understand that totally. But usually you convince these kids to sign out of school by saying, hey, we'll give you a look in the NHL right away. Like we saw that with Jacob Bernard Docker. We saw that with Shane Pinto. But this team with where they're at and acquiring a a dominant defenseman like Chikrin, I don't think that's going to be in the cards. But even if he comes and gets an NHL salary and and is like the eighth defenseman, I think that being in an NHL environment could be really good. If you want to have him as almost like a red shirt in, uh, in college where they don't play games, but they're with the team every day. Like we saw that with Formanton. Remember his first year? He played two games, but he traveled with the team. He practiced with the team. He went on the road trips, did it all. And that's dangling a carrot for the next year because they're like, I don't want to ride buses anymore. I want to play in the NHL. So I think, and it eases the transition from North Dakota's state-of-the-art facilities to Belleville. A little little ease. That's what I was going to say. If like... If you're coming from North Dakota, you're already kind of accustomed to NHL lifestyle without the paychecks. So yeah, 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 hundred percent. So hey, gonna be I'm actually be locked into that game today. I'm really curious to see Omaha against North Dakota, and you also have the rivalry because Johnny Tycona gets booed like crazy every time they're at yeah. the Ralph because of uh, of his transfer and leaving North Dakota. So uh, that game's actually gonna be in in Omaha tonight. So they right they get the home ice yep. because that's easy man that's such a dominant uh, team is is so far down meanwhile speaking of dominant teams Pilsy, Stephen Halliday and Ohio State taking on Michigan they've had success against Michigan so we're going to be following along that we'll have some updates for you after the weekend but man college hockey if you act, like I know we kind of talk about it like junior but when you get into it, if you watch like how fired up everybody is at the arena like it's a super cool atmosphere especially when you're dealing with like college hockey towns like North Dakota. I mean, uh, Michigan. Ann Arbor and Michigan, yeah. Yeah. That's where so, the teams are going to be, man, at that rink. They've got like the Seattle style. Speaking of last night, like they've got full windows coming in. I, I love that natural light. I think cool. it adds such a cool element. Yeah, we, we definitely got to get to one of those games eventually, Ross. I'd be down. Yeah, next time there's like a, a sense prospect. You still have to get to the Ralph, too. Next year yes, when yes. Ottawa comes to Winnipeg, we'll plan it out that we can go down to the Ralph. I know there's no Nodak Sens expected to be in the lineup unless yeah. <laughs> you got a couple sixth rounders, you got a couple seventh rounders this year. Just take someone, anyone. Yeah. But um, yeah, we got to get some some college go. We'll, we have plenty of time, years to come here on Lockdown Centers. We're just getting years. started. We can't thank you enough for making us your first listen each and every day. You guys accelerate what we do you get us fired up to get on here each and every day whether Pilsy and I are together or miles apart we are so fired up to share our love with this team with you guys and battle through the the depths of depression is that a fair way to put the last five years on the ice and off the ice to an extent we we've been in the depths of depression let me just say that we've been there but now the light is shining in like natural light at the Seattle Kraken. It's planet. always darkest before the dawn, Ross. Hey, you know what we didn't make enough of a stink about last night on the postcast? The auto <laughs> senders just snapped the Seattle Kraken's five-game winning streak. That's true. Yeah, that's huge. Snapped. Just like that. So what's next for the Ottawa Senators? A meeting of the minds with the Vancouver. Can I, I want to say the Sens have had a ton, ton of success against Vancouver. What do you think that head-to-head record looks like? Uh, what time frame are we using? Let's just do the last. Let's do since the COVID season, right? Because so that like in- including the All Canadian year or after. Mm, I'm wrong either way. Although no, Ottawa's won four of the last seven. No, it's pretty even actually. Yeah, I was gonna say I think it's even. I think they kind of deal each other blows. Like one team has a really good game, the other one mixes one in. So I think it's been pretty even here. They beat the wheels off of Ottawa last in that. In that COVID season, I thought Ottawa had had a better record against Vancouver. No, no, the West, uh, the West absolutely destroyed Ottawa in the COVID Holy year. Lee, dude, yeah, they won the first five games, then Ottawa won three of the last four. So kind of okay. like you said, it's very, it's very kind of here and there when it comes to to trends. Now Vancouver got the win in Ottawa earlier on this year. That was the game Ryan Reynolds was at, but yeah. last year. 
in Vancouver, Ottawa got the win. So hopefully they can put on another show for you sickos out on the left coast. Make sure you send in your boots on the ground photos. Yes. Tag us. Tag Leems Martian. I love it all the time. I love it when it's at the CTC. It's like my alarm knowing that there's half an hour to the game. <laughs> when everyone's getting to the seats and just firing them in. Yeah. I absolutely love it. It's such a cool little uh, – would, would you even call it like a – what do you call it when you do something over and over again? A trend? No. It's like almost cool. consistently? Yeah, almost consistently. <laughs> no. Pattern. You, no, they always do it in college. In college sports. Tradition. Tradition. Word of the day. Tradition. Word of the day. Word of the day. Tradition. Word of the day. Word of the day. Word of the day. Tradition tradition absolutely love it uh what do you say we continue this tradition of locked on senators on monday with a full episode where we are going to name the winner so go retweet get your entry in for a chance to win two senators tickets in the 100 level what's row h are you are you a numbers guy row h is like row 11 7 11 no i'm not 11 9 i'm going 9 all right, I don't know the answer. Somebody A-E-D-E-F-G-H. write us in the comments. D E F G H eight. I said seven, and you said nine. Look nice. at us. Look at us, uh, Ross. And we will continue our tradition even sooner than Monday. We'll have a postcast for both the games Saturday and Sunday. You know. And it. don't forget to change your clock Saturday night. We're springing forward. Oh damn. Yeah. Oh. Oh damn. Oh damn. When you work at four a.m. All of a sudden. It's 3 <laughs> No, I was just saying that because I already can't handle time zones and time switches. So this is going to throw me for a loop, but I'll battle. We'll battle. We'll battle. All right. We'll talk tomorrow night. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day. Let us know in the comments as well where you're at with the Ottawa Senators right now. What do you like? What needs to improve? And how would you fix the power play? Please let us know. We need to know. And make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Write us a five-star review on Apple. It all goes a long way to helping the show grow. But for today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan, and this has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day.